An important aspect of these electrical forces is that electric forces obey superposition. That is a big fancy thing that physicists say. They obey superposition. Let me look, let me put that in Google Translate for you here. This will help. Let's see. This is, let's put that in English. Let's see. Electric forces. Uh, add up. That's really all we mean. They add. If you have force due to one charge, a force due to another charge, you just add them. They add, OK, a little bit more complicated. They add as vectors, you could say. That's implied here, because the force has to be a vector. Therefore, it must obey superposition as a vector. So let's do a quick little problem or look at a, a situation and see if we can make any sense out of that. So let's put, let's start with our three charges on an axis, okay? All on the same axis, right? Two charges you can always put on an axis. When you get into three, they might go off into a plane or something. So let's have charge A and let's have charge B and over here let's have charge C. And let's put it further away than that. Let's put it over here, C. And this one has a charge Q, and this one has a charge 2Q, and this one has a charge Q. Say, I'm just making this up. And you can see they all happen to fall on the same line. So we can ask simply, what is the force on C? What is the force on C? And we'll do it as a vector. So we've got to start thinking about the vectors now. Well, we would also need to know the separations to figure this out. So I'm going to say these are separated by D. And these, I'll try to make it farther to make it 2D. So it looks like it's pretty close to 2D. Close enough. Right? So A to B is D, B to C is 2D. So if these obey superposition, we can use sort of a notation like this. We can say the force, the total force on C is the force that A applies to C. So we can call that F A. I'll do A with an arrow to C. That means the force that A applies to C plus the force that B applies to C. Like that. Is that everything? Well, that's everything applied to C. So Coulomb's law applies forces pairwise between every pair of particles. There are forces between A and B, but we didn't ask for those. And another thing about these kind of problems is we always draw these and apply that they're just fixed in space. If you really had these here, what would happen? They would all fly apart. Right? But whenever we ask these questions, it's always just pretend everything is held together and think about the forces even though they're being held together. Or you say, at this instant in time, what's the force? And yeah, sure enough, they'll fly apart. Don't ever worry about the fact that these two may be moving or something. Just take the drawing and go with it, OK? So let's add these vectors. So the force of A to C, this is a good practice here, <coughs> is Coulomb's constant uh, times the product of the charges. So Q times Q from the top um, over the separation squared. The separation is actually 3D squared, right? where 2D plus another D. We need that separation. So. 3d squared. <coughs> and that is to the right, because they're both plus q. We're assuming these are all positive charges, so that pushes to the right. And this one, since they're all positive, will also push to the right. So we don't have to deal with the vector aspect right now. Um, this one would be ke times what? Uh, 2q times q. over, in this case, uh, 2d squared, because right? the separation is just 2d over 2d squared. And you could simplify that if you want. I mean, they're all going to be ke q squared over d squared. And what would you get? This would be 2 plus 1 is 3. And this would be, oh, you'd have a different denominator. It'd be a mess. But you could simplify that or plug in numbers or whatever you want. And if you want to give it as a vector, you would know it's going to go this way, because both components were to the right. We'll look at it with vectors next. 